Holly Model 4150 vacuum secondary carburetors are easily identified by these features. Dual feed center hung flow poles, a primary metering block and a secondary metering block, and no accelerator pump on the rear bowl. Most distinctly, a vacuum unit will be connected to the secondary throttle shaft on the passenger side of the carburetor. 4150 models are designed to fit to a square bore intake bolt pattern, but can also use an adapter to bolt to spread bore intakes. There's a lot more to a 4150 vacuum secondary carburetor. Come in for a look inside. Let's start out with the throttle body. This component is also referred to as the base plate and might have a few vacuum port configurations. Most Holley carburetors have at least one large port that's intended for drawing in crankcase fumes from a PCV valve and one smaller port that's meant for hooking up any accessories that require full vacuum. If your base plate has two larger ports, one is meant for PCV and the other could be used for connecting to a power brake booster. Keep any unused ports plugged with a cap to eliminate any vacuum leaks. On the base plate of a 4150, you'll notice an arm that will operate the accelerator pump of the front fuel bowl. Model 4150 vacuum secondary carburetors only have one accelerator pump located on the front fuel bowl. The throttle plate assembly also has a curb idle adjuster screw on the driver's side which sets the idle speed of the engine by opening and closing the primary throttle plates which allows more air to enter the engine. On the passenger side, you'll find the fast idle cam adjustment screw for models with electric chokes. The main body of a 4150 will have a choke horn and choke plate that controls the airflow amount during the engine warm-up. Under the choke plate you'll find the two primary venturi bores and boosters. You'll also find an accelerator pump discharge nozzle that's sometimes called a squirter. On a vacuum secondary 4150 model there's no accelerator pump for the rear bowl so in turn there's no discharge nozzle for the secondary venturis. The volume and duration of fuel flow through the primary squirter can be customized with a Holly accessory kit. You can swap to a different size squirter and you can switch to one of many different accelerator pump cams that are changed out on the throttle plate assembly. Back on the body, the front and rear venturis have four small holes that are the air bleeds for the primary idle and main fuel metering systems. The outer two are for the idle circuit and the inner two are for the main circuit. These holes should always be kept free of debris and can be flushed with carburetor cleaner as maintenance. Like all Holly carburetors, the 4150 has a primary metering block that will have two primary jets to control normal fuel flow and a power valve that will act as an auxiliary fuel supply during acceleration. Idle mixture is set by adjusting the idle mixture screws located on each side of the metering block. On a model 4150, just above the passenger side idle mixture screw, you'll find a small vacuum port. This is called the timed or spark advance vacuum port. At idle, this port will show little or no vacuum to keep the distributor from advancing prematurely. If you have a mechanical advance distributor, you'll need to plug up this port. All 4150 vacuum secondary carburetors come with dual feed center hung float bowls. Inside a dual feed bowl, there's a float that's fixed in place with a center mounted hinge that will press on a needle and seat assembly that's positioned above. The float and seat work together to control the fuel level in each fuel bowl. On top of the bowl, for some models, you'll find an adjusting nut that will control the level of fuel inside the bowl. On the bottom exterior of all primary fuel bowls is an accelerator pump. The accelerator pump arm is affixed to the base plate and presses against the diaphragm inside the accelerator pump. The pump is activated every time the throttle is pressed and will send fuel immediately to the squirter that we looked at earlier. 4150 model carburetors also have a secondary metering block. In the rear block of a vacuum secondary model, you will find jets, but you won't find a power valve. Also, there will not be an accelerator pump mechanism on the rear bowl of a vacuum secondary model. However, the rear bowl may have a provision for one of these accelerator pumps, but no actual unit installed. Now let's go over to the passenger side of the carburetor. Control of the opening and closing of the secondary throttle plates will be done by the vacuum unit on the passenger side of the carburetor. As the engine runs and the venturi air velocity increases the vacuum signal in the venturis, the vacuum secondary assembly will automatically start to open when needed to supply the proper amount of fuel. 
Holly has accessory kits available that contain different springs with various tensions that can be used to tune this system to your engine's exact requirements. One more component to review is the choke assembly. With a manual setup, you need to hook up a cable that will control the position of the choke plate we saw earlier on the main body of the carburetor. With an electric choke setup, the position of the choke plate is controlled automatically when the engine is started and then returns by itself to its closed position when the engine's off. That will cover most of the details for a Holley 4150 vacuum secondary carburetor. Let's see what's up next. <laughs>